Hey everybody and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Today we're going to be looking at um, something nice and simple and quick. Uh, it's from a project I was doing a, a very long time ago. Um, this one is a uh, tune underscore material. So uh, we're going to create a new material, call it tune mat and open it up. Um, we're going to set it to post process and we're going to set it to unlit like so. Uh, actually, we're going to set it to subsurface. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Today, we're going to be looking at something just a little bit simple tutorial, just setting up a self shading uh, material um, for anyone who's going down that sort of route. Uh, it's, I did a project a long time ago, and this really came um, in hand. This is just a new material called Tune, uh, Tune Mat, and it's going to be set up as a post process, and it's going to be a subsurface. Uh, this is going to be quite a lot, so uh, please bear with me. I'm going to go probably quite fast, so just pause the tutorial and catch back up. Uh, we want two scene textures. The first one being uh, post process zero, and the second one being uh, diffuse color. There we go. Uh, we want two desaturations, desaturation, like so. Uh, copy and paste those, plug them both into one another, and then we want to divide, like so. There we go. Uh, and then we want a clamp and the clamp can be left at zero and one uh, and then this will go into an if statement um, and keep it in the a next we want to um, copy and paste these two uh, just because we're going to use them and put them opposite like that uh, we then just want to add this one into an add. We want to put this one into, uh, actually it's going to be easier if I get this, the scalar parameter. First call this tint and set it to one and put this into a multiply like so and plug that into the B. Uh, then we want uh, another multiply. This one can go into the A, like so. And we just want to get ourselves a three constant. So hold down three to get that. And we want a to hold one and get a zero, just a, a, a single constant. And we want to append the vector and just do it like that. Uh, and then that can go straight into the B. Now for this, we want to set this to, um, uh, 0 0.917 for probably all three of these. There we go. Uh, and then that's that part done. That can get plugged into A over B. Uh, we want another scalar parameter called um, shade depth. That can be set up to 0 0.5 and plug that into the B. Okay, I'm just going to try and neaten this up just a wee bit. And then for the last section, we need um, the, both of these again, like so. 
we want another one called dark tint another scalar power to hold s to get that we will set that one to one uh, and it's very similar you just want to add this and multiply this plug that color in chuck that into the b uh, let's just try and keep everything as neat as we can uh, and then we want to multiply this my god my code's a bit all over the place isn't it um, <clears throat> then we want to get a three constant so hold three and get that one uh, let's open this up 0 0.265 we'll go for 0 0.265 0 0.265 to get that lovely gray color um, we then want to append this append append vector and we want a zero constant again drag this down to here stick that into the multiply and then this goes into the a equals b okay next section we're moving on to here now we want to get two of these again now they are going to be different though we want the top one to be uh we'll do this again because this one's going to be the one that changes so change the diffuse color now to scene depth we want to um divide both of these uh, and then we want to get a desaturation like so and then this can go straight into another if uh, we want to oh I do apologize I've put the wrong thing in there this can get stroke shoved 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 straight into the a over b and the a equals equals b we want to get a another scalar parameter we'll call this one effect distance we'll set this to um 10 000. um and plug that into b we want to get a single constant again and call that a one that can go into the b uh, like that now let's just tidy this up a wee little bit because this if now needs to go into there I'm gonna try my best to tidy this as best as I can but that's that section done and next we need to get three of these so we want scene depth custom depth and we want the post process as well so change this one to custom depth depth okay and all we need to do now is get a mask no a component mask saving oh. component mask we'll change that to just be G um, we want to get both of those as a G uh, then we want to get another if a is A, G is B, and then the post process goes into A equals B, and then this if goes into the A over um, A over B. Now let's just tidy this up a little bit more. Okay, pull that if in a bit just so it sits a little bit nicer okay final bit now guys let's bring this up to here we just need to divide now divide and we're dividing by a scalar parameter called light and that can be set to eight and that can go into there and plug into there so this is what you should have by now uh, it was a quick one um, very very quick um, <laughs> tutorial uh, or well, I did run through it very quick anyway so just pause it where you need to 
Okay, so I think the um, <clears throat> the uh, do, 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 do. so I think it was because the thing should have been set to one. So if I start adding this to stuff, you can see it's brightening everything. It's giving it a bit more of a cartoony look. It doesn't have much of an effect on this character because uh, we've got that metal -y look of the um, of the UE5. Um, uh, character it doesn't really affect metals too well but as you can see it is affecting this it's making it all lighter um, it's done the same thing here it's kind of gone soft with the shadows uh, so yeah just to finish up this this tutorial just to show this off a little bit better I'm using um, one of my old projects um, so I made these characters and all this sort of stuff um, a long long time ago but if I turn off the render pass, you'll have a better chance of seeing what it's actually doing. So this is the lighting in Unreal that they tried to give the realism of all these different shadows, um, depending on where the sun is. But if you use the render, the, the, the Toonie um, post-process material we've just made, it creates two tones instead. So it kind of wipes all that dynamic shadowing out and kind of shades it one tone and make lightens everything makes it basically a lot more kind of cartoony it does it for the characters as well so the ue5 representation i tried to show you isn't the best um so here you go you can see it's got all those darker shadows there's a lot more different tones um and if we reactivate it it becomes one solid color and it also lightens everything to that kind of tune uh, cell shading kind of style very cool for things like Legend of Zelda, Wind Waker game style kind of look. Um, and I've used this throughout my project, so you're, you're getting a lot better sort of two-tone out of everything. Um, yeah, I worked on this game for nearly a year. I, I got a lot out of this first area. Um, but yeah, so uh, a very, very kind of cool tool to use if you want to go that self-shaded route uh, in just helping bring your world to a better look than sort of a lot of the Unreal um normal sort of settings are you know but hopefully you enjoyed this hopefully it was useful to you guys hopefully this last little section this last little look at everything kind of um shows you um what it actually does what it you know in a better light than than i was in the actual ue5 uh area but thank you so much guys for checking this video out uh leave a little like and comment if you want me to cover anything else and uh, hit that subscribe button if you wouldn't mind. It really helps my channel. And of course, um, you can always change your mind down the line. So thanks so much, guys. I'll catch you next time. Take care. Bye.